freezing, rendering and exporting. When working with large, complex edits, it is easy to run out of processor cycles. Each filter you add to an edit will increase the CPU load, and when the CPU meter starts to approach the red zone, you risk dropouts in your audio as your system struggles to keep up. You may be able to deal with more tracks by increasing the cache size in the file settings tab of the settings page. If your system is still struggling, however, you may need to freeze some tracks. Select a track or several tracks and press the Freeze Tracks button in the Properties panel. Traction will now render all those selected tracks to a single 32-bit freeze file which is stored in the temp directory and then automatically mute those tracks and shrink them to a thin strip to indicate their frozen status. Now any filters on those tracks will use no processor cycles and any audio on those tracks will not need to be read from the hard drive. But you will still be able to hear them because Traction will automatically sync the playback of the freeze file behind the scenes. You may wish to switch to the file settings tab of the settings page and check that the temp directory is located on a partition with enough free space. You will not be able to make any changes to the frozen tracks unless you select them again and unfreeze. If several tracks are frozen and you unfreeze just one of them, you will need to wait while Traction recalculates the freeze file. Actually what Traction is doing is re-rendering all the frozen tracks, but this time without the one you just unfroze. If you cancel this process, all the tracks will be unfrozen immediately, leaving you free to make a new selection of tracks to re-freeze. Unfreezing all your frozen tracks works immediately because there is no new freeze file to calculate. Tracks that are routed to other tracks cannot be frozen directly, but it is possible to freeze the entire subgroup by freezing just the group track. If you freeze the entire drum group, for example, you can then work in detail on other elements of the mix without your processor straining to calculate the drum mix at the same time. Freezing a group will only shrink the group track, however, so you should be careful not to make any changes to the individual tracks as you will not hear the results until you unfreeze the subgroup. You can also freeze an entire folder by freezing its overview track. I often choose to freeze all tracks in an edit before tracking important elements like vocals, as this ensures that all my processor power and hard drive capacity are devoted to capturing the performances and it greatly reduces the risk of glitches or dropouts spoiling a good take. To do this simply select one track then press Ctrl and A to select all tracks then hit freeze. Traction will pop up a warning if any of your tracks are routed to subgroups but it will freeze the group tracks anyway so you can ignore this warning and let Traction sort it all out for you. When it has finished the edit should sound exactly as it did before freezing, but your CPU meter will now be reading practically nothing and your hard drive will only need to stream a single stereo track. Freezing can also be used in conjunction with Org Sends, but you need to know a little trick. Freezing a track that sends to a reverb will render that track without the reverb return, so it will lose the effect. If you select the return track as well as the send track and freeze them together, then it won't lose its effect. But the reverb is now frozen, so any unfrozen tracks can no longer use it. The trick is to select the return track and use the standard copy and paste functions to create a duplicate. Now make sure to select one of those return tracks along with any others before you hit freeze.
If you unfreeze all tracks, the duplicate should be muted, otherwise the effect levels will be boosted. So make sure the duplicate return track is always either muted or frozen. If you need to free up some processor cycles, but wish to keep the ability to mix the tracks, try rendering those tracks instead. The Render Track button lives underneath the Freeze button and contains options to render to a specific file, which will allow you to specify the file name and directory of the resulting file, or render into the project directory, which will name it automatically and save it into the current project folder. Both options allow you to specify the resolution of the rendered file and to choose whether the new track will replace the original or whether it will be added to the edit alongside the original. Choosing to add the track and then muting the original will allow you to change your mind later if you need to. Rendering a MIDI track will also allow you to edit the resulting audio. But unlike the freeze function, rendering several MIDI tracks will increase the load on your hard drive while reducing the load on your CPU, which may be a problem with slower laptop drives or high sample rates. Selecting several tracks and rendering them together will create a single file with a mix of all those tracks. It is also possible to render subgroups or tracks which return audio from rewire devices. If you press the render button for a track with no clips, Traction will check that this is really what you want to do. Once you are happy with your mix, you will probably want to export it as a single audio file to be mastered or burnt onto CD. The export menu contains a create an audio file option, which will open a render dialog. Here you can specify the name and directory of the resulting file, choose from various file formats, specify mono or stereo, and set the resolution. Normally you should set the sample rate the same as the current driver settings, as this will give the best quality results. But you can choose a different one if you need to, and Traction will sample rate convert the result for you. The best bit depth to choose depends on what you plan to do with the resulting file. If the song is completely finished and ready to burn to CD, you should choose 16-bit, and you should also enable the dither option unless you have used a third-party dither plug in the master section. If you plan to process the resulting file in any way afterwards, however, even just with a simple volume change or fade out, you should choose the 24 or 32-bit options instead to avoid the dither noise and truncation distortion caused by converting the audio to 16-bit. 32-bit audio does not really provide any extra quality over a 24-bit version, but it does provide extra headroom. The easiest way to hear the difference is to deliberately distort the mix bus really badly by turning up the volume. You can add some extra volume filters to the master section to make this as obvious as possible. Now export three versions at 16, 24 and 32 bit resolutions using whatever sample rate your drivers are set to. If you import these files into a fresh edit, they should all sound equally distorted. However, if you turn the volume down for the 16 and 24 bit files, the result is just a quiet and distorted signal. But if you do the same for the 32 bit file, the clipped peaks will be restored and the signal will clean up again. You can also opt to automatically trim the start and end points of the resulting file or render just the region between the markers. 
and if there are any clips or tracks selected, you can opt to render just those clips or tracks. Choosing to render each track to a separate file will render each track individually, which will allow the project to be mixed in a different application if needed. WAV file exports from Traction also have a broadcast WAV timestamp, so applications that support this will be able to automatically place the audio at the correct point on the timeline. Likewise, Traction recognises timestamp information in broadcast WAV files created by other applications, and audio clips can be moved back to their original position on the timeline via the right-click menu. The render process is faster than real-time, but the time it takes to export will depend on the complexity of the edit and the speed of your system, as well as the length of the piece. A small minority of plugs or rewire devices may not work properly faster than real-time, however, so Traction provides a render at one time play speed option. If you choose to normalise the export, Traction will scan the file, find the loudest peak, and then scale the volume level of the whole file to make that peak hit full scale 0 dBFS. This will guarantee that the file is as loud as possible without clipping, but it does not guarantee that it will sound the same volume as other normalised files, as our perception of volume is based on average levels rather than peak levels. The adjust level based on RMS option will do a much better job of matching volume levels between different exports, but unless you set a very low target value or render a 32-bit file, you will risk clipping the peaks and introducing distortion. As a general rule, I would advise that you export your mixes at 24-bit resolution with plenty of headroom, as you can then adjust their relative levels in context before converting them to 16-bit files suitable for a CD. The Create an MP3 or OGG file option works in much the same way, but instead of high-quality audio suitable for a CD or DVD, it will produce data-compressed audio suitable for internet distribution. Traction uses the LAME codec, which needs to be downloaded separately for licensing reasons, and Traction needs to be directed to the LAME executable file in the File Settings tab of the Settings page. You may need to relaunch Traction after changing this setting. The dialog is very similar to the audio export function, but with a choice of MP3 or OGG files instead of WAV or AIFF. OGG Vorbis files are generally considered to sound better than MP3, but although it is freely available from Vorbis.com, many people do not have the codec installed on their computers, and most MP3 players will not be able to decode them. MP3 files, on the other hand, will play on almost anything, including many modern mobile phones. If you wish to create an MP3 file that plays on the widest possible range of target devices, you should choose the constant bitrate option rather than the variable or average alternatives. You can then choose a bitrate from the list on the right. Higher values here translate to better quality sound at the expense of larger file sizes. 128 kilobits per second is the most commonly used setting. OGG files, on the other hand, should normally be created using the variable bitrate option, which then provides a quality setting from 1 to 10. Again, higher values will sound better, but will result in larger files. A setting of 4 or 5 will produce a file roughly the same size as a 128 kilobits per second constant bitrate export. OGG and MP3 exports both start by rendering a temporary 16-bit uncompressed version before encoding, so the dither button should be on unless you have specifically used a third-party dither plug in the edit. You can tag the files by selecting Add ID3 or Vorbis info and pressing the Edit button to enter the data. Finally, I want to say a word on the subject of dither. Dither is a clever mathematical trick which greatly reduces the distortion and loss of detail caused by reducing the bit depth of your audio signal. As Traction's audio engine uses a minimum of 32-bit floating point resolution, dither should be used whenever you export a 16-bit file, even if the original audio files in the edit are also 16-bit. For example, here is a very low-level reverb tail, 
which I exported from Traction at 16-bit with no dither, and then normalised in an audio editor so it can be listened to with normal monitor gain settings. Notice how the reverb itself seems to become more distorted as it decays, and the sudden stop when it drops below the level of the lowest bit. Now listen to this version, which was exported at 16-bit with Traction's dither enabled. The dither has added precisely calculated random noise to the signal, and now the reverb tail seems to continue for longer and to decay smoothly into the background noise. This is not magic, just clever statistics. Notice that the noise does not start until the start of the audio, and turns itself off after the reverb has decayed to silence. This is called an auto black, and it ensures that totally silent sections remain totally silent. The last example was exported at 16 bit again, but this time with Traction's dither turned off, and the MDA dither plug used in the master section instead. This time the noise starts at the very beginning of the file, and continues right to the end as there is no auto black. This is sometimes preferable, as background noise may be less noticeable if it is continuous than if it stops and starts again. If you use a third party dither plug, or a brick wall limiter that adds its own dither noise, it is important to make sure that the dither is the very last plug in the chain, and also to ensure that the master fader is at unity, because the volume level of the added noise is critical. This also means you can't use the dedicated master fade in and out options in the master section, but you can add an extra volume filter to the master section before the dither and use automation instead. If you stick to Traction's dither, you can of course use the master fade features, and there is no need to set the master fader to Unity. Whatever you do, you should make sure that you don't add dither twice, so if you are using plugs that are capable of adding dither noise, you should double check they are set correctly before exporting. <laughs>